So now that we have all of our settings ready to go, um, let me tell you a bit about the different features over here. Um, of course, I'm going to be going through this in more detail as we're creating, um, but just the basics. So this one, the first brush tool you see here, um, this is a pixel brush. Pixel brushes are the equivalent to other brushes that you'll see on Adobe Photoshop. Um, if you click on this little arrow here, you'll see a lot of different types of um, brushes, including just like basic ones uh, like that, um, and also like comic brushes that are a little bit more funkier. Um, and there's also like ink brushes. A lot to experiment with there. Um, and um, you can also add more brushes by going going down and you click on this plus button right here and you can click on discover new brushes um, and there's a lot of brushes that you can look at um, let's say you wanted I don't know um, I don't know like maybe like brushes for calligraphy you can follow you just click on follow and then um, it should update the brushes for you um, and these are your library brushes or you can also import from file um, if you have any brushes that you um, have maybe bought from other people um, and then the great thing about the pixel brushes is that you can favorite pens so for example let's say i really like this brush pen it's really cool i like the little texture in the edges there so let's say i like that so i just need to click on the star right here that allows me to keep all my favorite pens in one place um, and i love doing that because um, there's so many brushes that you can use as you can see and i like to just know exactly what i want to work with um, once you develop a particular style for your work um, you will tend to gravitate to the same sort of brushes um, and so that's what it is there um, of course you've got buttons up top here like undo and redo um, that are pretty typical um, and then you've got um, live brushes which are um, e either watercolor let me just use a color so you can see that better um, this one is a watercolor different types of watercolor um, and you can mix in different colors like you could um, with actual watercolor paints great thing about this is it doesn't dry so you can just keep adding and you get this really really cool um, layered effect um, and depending on the type of work you want to make this might be something that you want to use um, and um, there's also right over here oil paints um, so oil paints are exactly like what they sound like um, they are oil and you can see the texture of the oil paint um, and so again they kind of mix as they would naturally um, and so you know depending on your style you might want to use these paints as well um, I tend to use mostly the pixel brushes but I just wanted to show you that um, and then you have what's called vector brushes which are equivalent to the brushes you would find on um, illustrator and these vector brushes are great because as you will probably be aware um, you can resize this um, make it really big or really small um, and you will get the crisp lines lines no matter um, how many times you change it and that is unlike the pixel brushes because the pixel brushes um, they have a specific pixel size and if you make your drawing bigger um, your drawing might look a little bit blurry um, depending on how much bigger you make 
the drawing. So if you want to resize up and down a lot, as you can see, the pixel brush looks a little bit pixelated, um, then the vector brush might be a better choice for you. Um, but I love the variety of pixel brushes, so I always gravitate towards that. Um, this is the eraser tool. Um, as you can see. Um, this is a smudge tool that you can use with certain types of brushes. Um, and so you can play around with that. This one, I used it previously. Um, this is used to resize different elements. Um, and this one um, is kind of cool actually. So um, let's say you made a little circle here um, and you see these like, like moving dots, right? And so let's say I use the watercolor. Um, if I paint now, it'll only paint within the circle, which is really cool. If I just wanted to do something just in there. And this also works with watercolor. So let's say I choose watercolor. Put some of that color in there. And pink. And see how it's, it's merging together, but it's not leaving the circle. And so I can create something really cool like that. Um, and then the great thing is I can always resize it up and down and put it in different places. Um, and so that's a really cool tool. Once you're done with that, you just have to click on deselect and voila, you have something really cool like that. Um, right over here, we've got the paint bucket tool is exactly what you think it would be. It just paints everything in like that. And then you've got the shape tool. You've got circle, square and polygon. Um, obviously this is, <clears throat> this is to, um, create these shapes and to like actually color it in. So you just just create one and then create fill and then you have a square that you've created you can change the color fill and then you get another one like that we've got text and the beautiful thing about adobe fresco is that you've got access to all of your adobe fonts um, that you're using on the desktop um, that carries over to Adobe Fresco. And um, yeah, hello world. You can have that there. Um, another cool tool is the paint picker tool. Um, you just click on paint picker and let's say I wanted this color. Um, it'll tell me exactly what that is. And if I switch to a brush, I can use that, which is awesome. Um, and then this one is what you click if you want to use your camera or bring up photos. Um, and then we're done for this side, I guess. Oh. This is obviously your color wheel. Um, on this side, you've got your layers. Um, these are all the layers that I was working with before. Um, if I wanted to delete a layer, just click on a layer. There's lots of options. Delete. If I want to duplicate a layer, I click on duplicate. Move that around. Done. Um, what else can I do? I can also do what's called mask layer contents. And then I, I'm, what that means is whatever I paint, it's going to only paint on that specific layer. So for example, uh, let's say I make another, I'll make a white triangle right here, fill it in. Um, and then let's say 
I click on this layer and I click on this layer and mask layer contents. Now you'll see that I've masked this. If I go back to this screen here by switching that over, and let's say I wanted to paint, you can see that I'm only painting within this triangle. I'm not leaving it. If I wanted to create a cool little pattern on the triangle, I could do exactly that and not worry about getting the paint lost outside. Um, if I didn't have this mass layer, then I would just be painting all over the place. So that's a neat little tool. Um, obviously there's some other elements here, but I think that's the basics um, of what we're working with. And I think it's going to be easier if we start the project and you guys see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of these layers. And um, in the next video, um, we will actually start our project.